good to have you back because this video is about what a morpheme is. Words are made up of units that have a meaning. These units are called morphemes. In linguistics we say morphemes are the smallest meaning-bearing units of a language. An example. Birds love the rainforest. Into how many units, each carrying a meaning by itself, can you break down this sentence? You are probably thinking of birds love the rain and forest. Rain and forest are separated because both rain and forest carry their own meaning. It is said that they have a lexical meaning, that means that they can be used as words. But this is not quite correct. There are six morphemes, which are bird, s, love, the, rain, forest. The word birds consists of two morphemes, that is, two units, each carrying a meaning. The morpheme bird means animal that can fly. And what is the meaning of the ending s? This becomes clear if you omit this ending. Bird love the rainforest. This is no longer a grammatically correct sentence. The ending s seems to be important and to have some special function. Thus, the ending s in birds carries the grammatical meaning plural. So, we see that many word forms consist of one morpheme, i, at or fast, for example. Some, however, have several morphemes, birds, birds, faster, faster. Morphemes are divided into free and bound morphemes. They can each be further subdivided into lexical and grammatical morphemes. In total, there are four different types. First, free lexical morphemes, free grammatical morphemes, bound lexical morphemes and bound grammatical morphemes. First, the free morphemes, fine, table, the, and and. They can stand alone in a sentence as independent words. For example, the word table can be used in a sentence like the table is in the corner, without having to be attached to another word. As already mentioned, free morphemes are further divided into lexical and grammatical morphemes. The morphemes fine and table are free lexical morphemes because they have their own word meaning. They stand for something real, which can be something concrete, bush or abstract, piece or imaginary, like which. Free grammatical morphemes are for example the or and, because they do not carry an independent meaning but have a grammatical function. They are so-called function words. In a dictionary, it is not their meaning that is given, but their function, and connects two main clauses with each other. This is the function of and, and does not have a word meaning like table. Bound morphemes, unlike free morphemes, must always be bound to another morpheme. The s in birds, the ad in loved, the s in loves, and the re in restart are all bound morphemes. They cannot stand alone and cannot be moved. They must therefore be attached to another morpheme. For example, the S in birds is bound to the morpheme bird. It cannot simply be moved in front of the morpheme bird. That's not possible. Bound morphemes are also divided into grammatical and lexical morphemes. Many bound morphemes are grammatical morphemes. They indicate grammatical categories such as singular or plural or time. For example, the morpheme S in birds stands for plural. It has no word meaning. Bound lexical morphemes are rather rare. For example, the prefix re in restart is such a bound lexical morpheme. It cannot be used freely as a word in a sentence and means again or back. And finally, an exercise for you. How many morphemes make up the word uncontrollability? Write the answer in the comments. For each of the four different morpheme types, there is another learning video on my channel. You will find the link below in the video description as soon as the video is ready. Next, you can watch this video here. What are free morphemes? So then I would say good luck with your learning and until the next video.